YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back. And NFL waiver claims are in. I have 10 that really stand out to me. We're going to rank them from 10 to 1 in this video. I do think some trades will go down probably today, but leading up to the NFL season, we have you covered with that. Bunch of trade videos on the channel. In season content. Cannot wait. But let's go to my top 10 waiver claims. Number 10, I have the Rams claiming Cody Schrader off waivers. He was with the San Francisco 49ers, looked pretty good in preseason, but looked great last year for the Missouri Tigers, was one of their very best players, probably their best player. This just feels like a Rams type of back. You know, Kyron Williams is turning into a star back, and he was great in college like Schrader, but doubted a little bit because he's a little undersized, especially for his playing style. Blake Corum. I mean, not underrated that much, but a you know, similar type of back had the similar flaws. So it just feels like a Sean McVay slash LA Rams running back. And, you know, and they've had injury concerns in the past in their backfield. So they'll probably use him. It's just, if he wasn't, if he's going to work out somewhere, this is kind of the spot for him. So I really like him as a running back coming out of college, but him as a fit for the LA Rams here. So that is why he makes the list. Number nine, going to go with the New England Patriots claiming former Penn State linebacker Curtis Jacobs, another undrafted rookie here, number 10 and number nine, but he went with the Chiefs in undrafted free agency. Obviously didn't work out there, but I like his upside. He was a, you know, a, a rangy slasher, very athletic. Sometimes you wonder, is he you know, going to be, can you rush him off the edge? Could he be a blitzer? So the Patriots are typically good with players like that. So, and they're still a young upside growing team. So I think a really good landing spot for him, but he made some flashy big time plays on tape at Penn state. So I think he's definitely deserving of being on an NFL roster. And here you go in a good landing spot in new England. Eight's going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers claiming Royce Newman, the former Packers offensive lineman, Pretty versatile, and that's why, you know, it's all if you come across experienced, versatile offense linemen, even if it's just depth, that's what it is here. It's great. It's, it's a quality pickup. So they get that here. But I do again, I do like that he can play pretty much any spot on the offense line, but you look at him as interior depth. You know, didn't have the greatest go at the Packers, and that's typically, you know, not the greatest sign because the Packers are usually pretty good at developing and uh making offense linemen look good. But again, at the end of the day, end of the day, experience, versatile depth which is hard to come across in the NFL at this time of the year going into the season seven going to go with the Carolina Panthers claiming Keenan Isaac they claimed a bunch of guys especially corners but this is kind of the standout one he had a really good preseason speaking of the Buccaneers we were just talking about them but really good preseason with the Buccaneers but was tough to make that roster at that position and the Panthers badly needed cornerback help so out of the guys that they added today Maybe Isaac has the best chance of being that guy, and he has some upside as well. So he has an opportunity to make a statement, make an impact early on in year one. So definitely a young one to watch here uh, for Carolina. Number six, the Colts adding, here's another corner, Samuel Womack, who is with the 49ers, and he's always showing out uh, during preseason so he looked pretty solid just they had some stud players there so hard to fully get on the field and we know the Colts badly needed cornerback help they needed DB help in general but they added a, at a corner who now has experience in a pretty good defense a pretty good system over there in San Francisco um, so I think he only could help the Colts he will be depth but you, we could actually see him play a, a little bit this year so again should make an impact and should help Indy where they needed some help Five was a pretty big one for the Saints here. Kane Wagner coming from the Vikings, a running back, but a big time return man. So that's where he could help the Saints. But you know, Clint Kubiak has that Vikings background as well, and you know, so he'll you know he'll fit his system. He is a little bit down the running back depth chart as they are pretty loaded there. But this is actually one of the faster players in the league. Uh, you know, still has some upside, still has some talent. Um, so we'll see how he is used uh, for the New Orleans Saints. He comes in at number. Five. Number four, another running back, Hassan Haskins, was with the Titans. Didn't really work out there, but remember how good of a back he was in Michigan. And the fit here, where he landed, is what boosts them up my boost him up my ranks. Harbaugh on the Chargers. I mean, that's huge. Obviously, he played under him and he can fit that system. And it's a team that probably needs a running back. Just having that Michigan background is huge, so I think he'll get a, a very good opportunity. Not going to start, but they have some running backs with some durability concerns, but a guy that's liked over there, uh, obviously, with that staff. So I think he'll get an opportunity. We actually could see him play this year, so that is a sneaky one to watch out for. As we know, he is young, was out in college, has upside, but he definitely fits that scheme over there. 
Three of the Giants claiming Anthony Johnson, who was with the Packers last year in his small amount of time playing, looked pretty solid. I liked him a lot out of Iowa State. In his career, he's played corner and safety so he can help the Giants at either spot, which they needed. They badly needed depth at both spots. So it's almost like a two-for-one, it feels like, in a way. And again, it's a young player that's pretty decent, and he still has some upside. So they, they fill a big need, but they get that upside factor as well, uh, the Giants. So that, that's big and why he comes in, uh, or the Giants come in at number three. The second best waiver claim to me is a kicker, believe it or not. Braden Narvison coming from the Titans. Remember, they have Nick Folk. Narvison looked really good kicking in preseason. So this guy could be a legit you know, starting kicker. It feels weird saying starting kicker. A legit kicker for a team. And the Packers badly need a kicker obviously so this could help them a ton they might have you know kind of got lucky that another team found kind of a hidden gem and they didn't really need him because they already had a big time kicker uh, so this is actually going to help the Packers big time I'm going to guess he's going to be their kicker this year and we'll see if he uh, plays if he uh, you know produces like he did in preseason that'll be big for Green Bay they might have lucked out with this one and number one for me is quite obvious KJ Henry was just a rookie a year ago a pretty solid prospect out of Clemson very explosive in his moments looked pretty good for the commanders maybe the new staff didn't really view him as a, as a fit it seems like they want to do their own thing moving on from the past staffs guys but I think a really good fit at defensive end in the Cincinnati Bengals scheme. They're good at developing players. Again, you got a guy with upside that could actually help right now. And that's the big thing, too. It makes it even bigger. The Bengals lost a couple key rotational defensive ends, including his former teammate, Miles Murphy. So he is going to be a high-end rotational guy for the Bengals right now. And he has that upside for them long term. It's a no-brainer to put in my number one spot. This is big for the Bengals. So there you have it for the, the top waiver claims. Uh, there's more decent ones that could be sneaky, of course. But check out our trade videos. Those are still pretty valid. We have predicted some things right. We'll see if we get any more. Uh, you know, We'll talk maybe in the very near future. We'll talk about other guys that could be traded. But we are starting to get into that in-season content. Pump for that. Join us. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Can't wait. Season's about to be here. I'm pumped. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.